Imagine for a moment, the year is 1860, and you and your family are isolated deep in the remote Appalachian Mountains. There are no roads to speak of, no railroads, no stores, and your closest neighbors are miles away on the other side of the untamed forest, full of every wild animal that once roamed these mountains. Now. Imagine that you or your wife, or even worse, your child was gravely ill. What would you do? How would you survive? Would you have the skills to know what plants, tree barks, or animals could provide medicine that might save your life? Well, my friends, for hundreds of years, there was a special group of folks in these mountains that knew these skills. They survived without doctors or hospitals or pills manufactured in a pharmacy. Their knowledge of these vast forests, animals, and spells evolved from folk medicine, traditions that they brought to America from Scotland and Ireland. Many folks referred to this type of medicine as granny magic or granny witches. That's right, these women were the key to survival in the isolated Appalachian Mountains. And this, my friend, is their story. Now, anyone who's ever traveled through Appalachia knows that it takes a while. The back roads dip through the hollows and twist through the mountains with endless offshoots of narrow roads that disappear into the hills. This isolation is a unique feature of the Appalachian Mountains, and it's helped shape much of the region's culture and the legacy of granny witches as faith healers. Think about it for a minute. When it takes a half hour or more to get into town, and town is little more than a supply or a feed store, self-reliance and strong beliefs become crucial to survival. You also have to keep in mind that in the old days, hospitals were often too far away, and mountain folks were suspicious of them and didn't trust modern medicine very much. So, whenever an accident or an illness happened, the locals relied on granny witches. These traditional folk healers were skilled in herbalism, home remedies, spells, and energy work. Now, they did it all. They healed sickness, birthed babies, removed curses, and predicted the weather. In remote areas of these mountains, these women were the only source of medical care and spiritual guidance. Their practices were simple, inventive, and always grounded in the plants and the animals of the mountain that surrounded them. As folks started arriving in these mountains during the 18th century, they brought with them the traditional folk magic and healing from their home countries. And it was mostly women that practiced the concepts they had brought with them from Scotland, England, and Ireland. Once they settled in the Appalachian region, they began to adopt the healing practices from their Native American neighbors, who taught them all about the plants, the roots, and the leaves that were native to the mountains of North Carolina, Tennessee, and beyond. They also blended their practice with German immigrants who traveled through the mountains as they migrated to the south and over the mountains to the west. That's right, they also incorporated the knowledge brought to the mountains by African Americans who were escaping slavery in the south. And before you knew it, all of these natural and spiritual healing remedies blended to create healing powers that were unique to these mountains. The Granny Witch. For centuries, granny witches studied patterns in the land and properties of the plants that surrounded them. They harnessed the power of their natural and supernatural resources to guide their families 
and their neighbors. It was a mysterious oral tradition and was rarely taught outside of their immediate family and never taught to strangers. Indeed, and because of this, much of their knowledge died each time a granny witch passed on, creating a broken history of their practices. Now, these women knew how to treat most any sickness. Everything from a earache to kidney failure, they had a prescription. They prescribed wild peppermint tea for an upset stomach. And for nosebleed, they would instruct you to hang a pair of pot hooks around your neck. They created salves and tea to cure fevers. They used the remains of coffee and tea grounds to ease pain. They used catnip tea to treat infants from getting hives. They prescribed stewed down calamus root to help soothe colic. They put sulfur in the soles of shoes to ease flu symptoms. And if somebody came to them with a bad burn, they knew that blowing smoke and chanting the right words could put the fire out. That's right. They set broken bones, treated fevers, and cared for the terminally ill. Now, traditional granny magic included a lot of different practices. Dowsing was the practice of looking for water with a forked stick or a length of copper. It was a valuable skill to have if you or your neighbors needed to dig a new well. These women tended to the needs of other women. They worked as midwives and assisted in the birth of new babies. A granny witch would arrive at the home of a mother in labor with a bag of herbs, roots, and leaves. She would use these to help the mother safely deliver the child. And she might recite a verse from the Bible or a protective charm to keep the mother and the baby healthy. On the other hand, a granny witch also had the power and could be counted on to provide herbal remedies if a young woman didn't want to become pregnant. Now, I think we could learn a lot from these women. I mean, with all of the wars and epidemics and uncertainty taking place all over the world, what would we do if suddenly the modern medical system was shut down? Would you know what plants, leaves, and other natural medicines it would take to keep your family safe? Could you survive? Yes, sir. I think we could learn a lot from these granny witches. <laughs>